Hello and welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast, YouTube edition. I am your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today we're diving into all things scaffold knots, including the potential death knot. And is that really a myth? Anyways, if this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. Hello and welcome back to another episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. So today we are talking about the scaffold knots. All right. So all three of these knots look very similar, but all three of them are very different. So we have one that's right, one that's wrong, and then we have one that's maybe right. Mm, I don't know. Anyways, today we're going to dive into where we're going to use these and how they react under a slow pull test. All right. Also, who doesn't like to see things break? Let's be honest. So as we dive in here, let's talk about where you will encounter the scaffold knot. In rope access, um, also caving, this is a very common setup, a cow's tail. Here I have a figure eight. Um, you may have an overhand knot. Uh, even bull noses are out there um, attaching the cow's tail to your uh, central or your ventral D rings. And then you got your scaffold knot here attached at the carabiner. Purpose of the scaffold knot? Well, it prevents the carabiner from rotating. Okay. Also, in the event that you were to fall on it and you freshly tied this knot, it'll give you a little bit, you know, more shock absorption, resulting in less impact force on the person. Yes, you. However, that's not the only place you will find this knot being utilized in rope access. Okay. Swinging over to here, we have a hauling and lowering system. And if you haven't checked out my level two, level three haul system, check that out here. But moving on back here, this is a haul system, pretty standard three to one haul system, rope access with an ASAP as a backup. So if I pull this, all right, adjust my backup, you will see that these carabiners are both attached with a scaffold knot. Well, why do I want a scaffold knot there? Well, it prevents the carabiner from rotating just like it does on a cow's tail. However, in this circumstance, these could be a long ways away from you, okay? You're doing a big cross haul from one side of a structure to another side of a structure, and you don't have the ability to physically manage that carabiner all the time. By putting a scaffold knot there, it replaces that hand and fixes the problem. And then finally, we have drop sets. Um, not a common place to see, but definitely a place you can utilize them. We have these here, they're a lower profile than what we have here with figure eights. You may even have figure nines and depending on the person, these could be pretty long loops, which I absolutely disagree with, but it is what it is. Now, why would we want a scaffold knot up there? Okay, we know that if we tighten it, it's going to be nearly impossible to untie. So why would I want it? Well. Sometimes you have work that's right up underneath this. So you got some overhead work. This large profile will, you know, make the work a lot more stressful on the person. So a low profile knot gets them higher. Say you have a brand new level one that has to get off the ropes and do an aid climb. Well, this may be an option to help that person because they can get into their descent device, be super close to the beam and then transfer onto that aid climb that much easier. All right, so now that's out of the way, let's look at these knots and let's talk about each one. So here, if I pull on this strand here, nothing happens. So this is commonly known as a death knot. This is something that I refer to it and you know, probably anyone that I've trained will probably call it a death knot. And the reason being is you loading the load strand and nothing happens being that the tail of the rope here, okay, 
is actually all that's there. So you're relying on a little bit of friction here to hope that carabiner doesn't come out. If it does pull all the way out, well, you're gonna have a bad day. I wouldn't rely on that. That's scary, okay? Now, here we have the other knot, which is a scaffold knot, okay? Nice and clean. We have these two strands that are nice and tight together, and this cinches down nicely. And if you don't reset these on your cow sails, good luck on tying them, all right? This is a good knot. But then we have this knot, which is maybe right. Very similar, it acts the same. Okay, I pull this strand, it tightens down. Great, that's awesome. However, as you see that the tail is fed through the loop, not allowing those ropes to get to, uh, come together. And this is what sparked this conversation and this collaboration with How Not to Highline. So today we are going to be pull testing all three of these, figure out how they react. Am I making a mountain of a, out of a molehill with these? Does it matter if it's this way or this way? As well, we're going to find out if the death knot is a myth. Yes, yes, I did say it. Is the death knot a myth? So, let's hand this over to Ryan at How Not to Highline to find out. Welcome to Slack Snap. We're gonna break a few things today for you guys. This is my Slack Snap machine. Let me show it to you real quick. It is a metal rectangle with a hydraulic in it with all the hoses and stuff coming out from the underneath side to my DC power pump. Held on with some sophisticated green cord. And yeah, it's really not that special. Uh, this side, the dynamometers are fixed. So we're going to find out how strong our rope is today and our high-tech, high-budget slow motion. And this thing is so I don't have to have a tripod in my way when I'm working. Let's find out what an eight to eight breaks at first. Calm down, calm down, it's okay. All right, yeah, 18 kilonewtons. It breaks in the knot like every time and this side went flying. So I definitely need to shorten up the leash, but now we have something to base our next tests on. So we have a scaffold knot here. We're gonna do an eight on the side you would tie to your harness, a proper scaffold knot where this one does not intersect the other two. And it's wrapped around two full times here, three on that side with a decently long tail. And we're gonna find out if the tail shortens up and we're gonna find out how much it cinches on here. Now, from my experience, once this gets pretty tight, pretty hard to undo it. Did it break in the new? No. Wow. Oh, that's neato. Wow, it broke right, I guess, here or inside of it. This is the tail or was the tail. Let's see if I can break it. Let's see if I'm stronger than 20 kilonewtons. Mm, nope, I'm just making you dizzy. Wow, that is interesting. The reason I find that interesting is because... This side always broke first when we tested in our leash rings because we had a big fat bend radius. But on the carabiner, it's not any more special than the bend radiuses that we get in the figure eight. broke again at the other knot that's amazing but still technically higher than our first test it went flying across the room and hit in the garage door which is always scary to be standing next to this stuff okay here's the eight 
and a scaffold knot with the tail going between the loop. So the loop cannot close right now. We'll find out if that has any effect on it. And that is only 1.5 kilonewtons. And this was dressed. It's interesting that it undresses itself. That's a kinky knot. <laughs> it shot all the way over here. Wow, that's warm. The carabiner was right here and it broke in where it oh that is really warm here's our second one where it's got the tail in between that is only 4.42 let's break it not breaking in the figure eight. I have actually no idea where that went. So now let's test the death knot. I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can and we're gonna just find out how it acts. We're gonna find out if a longer tail matters. I'm just gonna pull as hard as I can. Oh, that is terrifying. Ah, it stopped coming through. Five kilonewtons right there. <laughs> ah, wow! It didn't come undone! Oh, I didn't have peak force on. Damn it! Okay, we're trying it again. Tail is coming out. Two kilonewtons. Four kilonewtons. That's the figure eight. Obviously it broke on this side. Whoa, it came completely undone. But albeit at 17. Wow. Wow. Let's do it one more time since I didn't have peak force on. Let's do a quick one. So the idea here is this tail is gonna potentially gonna keep coming out and that's why it's called a death knot. Uh, the problem is it's getting cinched up, or the good thing is it's getting cinched up here, and that is why the tail gets stuck and is breaking almost at full strength. So you can see there, uh, we are at three kilonewtons. Now, if we were to shock load this multiple times and not do a slow pull test, we could potentially get that tail out, but let's keep pulling on this. than full strength but not necessarily a death situation i am not advocating for this i just find it very interesting is all our death knots a myth <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you very much for that uh awesome job there so what did we learn today well first of all let's start out with where it started um I reached out to Ryan to do these pull tests because I haven't really found good information on pull tests with the scaffold knot or the death knot, if you will. So I wanted, you know, fresh up-to-date information as much as I could. Well, here we are. So we had three different knots. We had the scaffold knot with the strands touching. We had the scaffold knot with the tail going through and then the death knot. Is there a difference between the scaffold knot with the tail going through or not? I would say it doesn't matter. I think that making a mountain out of a molehill is exactly the case there. I think I was 100% disproved there. And 
however you tie it, you tie it. Whatever, it is what it is, okay? Does it look as nice? No, it doesn't, but, you know, you're, you're pulling at straws at this point. Now, switching over to the death knot part of the conversation, I thought that, without question, that that tail would just pull out. Was I disproven there? Yes, I was. However, I'm not going to say that, yeah, absolutely, it doesn't matter. No, I think that there's still a lot of questions. I think that there's still a lot of variables that we could introduce to the situation and come up with very different um, outcomes. However, at this moment, we're not there yet. So I think that it's still an open-ended question. Is it actually a death knot? Obviously, we know at the end of the day, we know that we want to hang on the strand that is cinching down on the carabiner. We don't want the tail relying on just strictly friction to hold it together. We know that. However, we still find that a lot of people tying the death knot. You still need to investigate. You still need to, you know, look out for each other um, and do buddy checks. Step one. And with all three of these knots, you cannot tell visually just by looking at it if it's one way or the other. You're going to physically have to take the carabiner out and test it. Okay. Those buddy checks need to be thorough. So, yeah, I was disproven. It is what it is. We're human. All right. But also this comes down to years and years and years of people saying something passed down to a generation, passed down to another person, passed down to another person. And yeah, I got caught in the crosshairs there. I was saying that, yeah, it had to be this way. It is what it is. All right. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you like this episode, please make sure to pause this video, head over to How Not to Highline. Make sure to subscribe to his channel. He did an amazing uh, job in helping us out here on my platform. Make sure to comment down below his video saying that I sent you over his way. Then come back, finish this video, hit the like button. Uh, show your support. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Should I do more episodes like this? And what other knots or things you would like to see? All right. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Yeah, it's right there. Mm -hmm. You know you wanna. And then hit the bell for notifications as I put out new content every Sunday. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts. And until next time.